Last time, we learned how to obtain the trigonometric function values of special angles whose terminal sides contain points in the unit circle. Would it be possible, too, to obtain the trigonometric function values of real numbers? That will be the focus of this video. The only target that we have to accomplish is to determine trigonometric function values of real numbers. Before proceeding, let's recall how we determine trigonometric function values of special angles using the unit circle. So we have an angle theta with a point x, y on its terminal side on the unit circle. So we have sine theta is equal to y over r, and that will be equal to y over 1 because r is equal to 1 if we have a unit circle. So simplify, that will be y. Cosine theta will follow the same logic. That will be x over r or x over 1 or simply x. And we have tangent theta which is equal to y over x. Proceeding with the reciprocal functions, we get cosecant theta is equal to r over y or that will be 1 over y. Secant theta will be equal to r over x or that is 1 over x. And lastly, we have cotangent theta and that will be equal to x over y. So what do we mean when we say that we have to determine the trigonometric function value of a real number? Remember when you used to evaluate f of x when you were learning it in grade 9? When you replace x with a given value? Well, we will do the same for trigonometric functions. We will evaluate them given a real number t. But what is that real number t? We define the value of a trigonometric function at a real number and that is its value at an angle of t regions, provided that the value exists. So when we say we want to evaluate sine 3, it means two things. It means sine of the real number 3 and the sine of an angle which measures 3 radians. That is different from saying sine of 3 degrees, which is the sine of an angle which measures 3 degrees. That angle is way smaller than an angle measuring 3 radians. Let's make that very clear, and we should say that sine of 3 is not equal to sine of 3 degrees. This is very important because many of you kind of think that degrees is the default unit of, an, of the measure of an angle because you are more familiar with it. So we have to be very careful with that. We will still be using the unit circle in determining the trigonometric function values of real numbers, not just the special angles. Say we have an angle theta measuring t radians, which has coordinates x, y on the unit circle, then we can use the same method that we used in obtaining the six ratios that we had before. Those are sine of theta is equal to y, cosine of theta is equal to x, tangent of theta is equal to y over x, cosecant theta is equal to 1 over y, secant of theta is equal to 1 over x, and cotangent of theta is equal to x over y. Just recall that sine of theta is equal to y and cosine of theta is equal to x only when the point is on the unit circle. For most of the examples that we will be using, we will assume that they are on the unit circle. If the assumption is not present, please check whether it's on the unit circle or not. How will you do that? Recall that the equation of any circle is x minus h quantity squared plus y minus k quantity squared equals r squared, where h and k are the coordinates of your center and r is the radius. And since the center of the unit circle is at the origin or at 0, 0, and its radius is 1, then we can replace h, k, and r into x minus 0 quantity squared plus y minus 0 quantity squared equals 1 squared. Simplified further, that will be x squared plus y squared is equal to 1. So if any point x, y satisfies that, then the point is on the unit circle. If it is less than 1, so x squared plus y squared is less than 1, the point is inside the unit circle. And of course, the third possibility is if it is greater than 1, that is x squared plus y squared is greater than 1, then the point is outside the unit circle. This is very important because if they are inside or outside the unit circle, we will have to compute for r and use it to solve for sine of theta, which will be y over r, and cosine of theta, which will be x over r. 
You might want to pause this video before proceeding to the exercises. You can play it after taking your notes. Now we are ready to do some exercises. Say you want to find the six trigonometric function values at t with the point negative 7 over 25 and negative 24 over 25 on the unit circle corresponding to a real number t. Since the assumption that p is on the unit circle is already given, we are sure that we can use our formula. So, sine of t is equal to the y-coordinate, which is negative 24 over 25. Cosine of t is equal to the x-coordinate, which is negative 7 over 25. And tangent of t is the ratio between y and x, so that will be negative 24 over 25 all over negative 7 over 25. And when simplified, that becomes 24 over 7. Next, we have cosecant of t, which is 1 over y, and that'll be negative 25 over 24. Then we have secant of t, which will be 1 over x, or that'll be negative 25 over 7. And lastly, we have cotangent of t, which will be x over y, or that is negative 7 over 25 all over negative 24 over 25, so that'll be 7 over 24. Let's have another practice problem. Say we have p of t, which is a point on the unit circle that corresponds to t. If p of t is coordinates negative 12 over 13 and negative 5 over 13, find the coordinates of t plus pi, the coordinates of negative t, and the coordinates of negative t minus pi. Since we are finding the coordinates of t plus pi first, we need to find the terminal side of it. T plus pi is like saying we need to rotate pi radians or 180 degrees from it. Thus, we arrive at a point in quadrant 1 which is 12 over 13 and 5 over 13. So the coordinates of P of T plus pi is equal to 12 over 13 and 5 over 13. Next, let's find the coordinates of the terminal point at negative T. This basically means that from 1, 0, we have to rotate with the same amount of rotation as t, but this time in a clockwise direction. This brings us to a point in the second quadrant with the coordinates negative 12 over 13 and 5 over 13. If we recall the properties of f of negative x, another way to find this point is to reflect the original point along the x-axis. It will bring us to the same answer. So again, the coordinates at negative t is negative 12 over 13 and 5 over 13. Lastly, let's find the coordinates at negative t minus pi. To determine this, we start at negative t, which we already determined in the previous exercise. From negative t, we then rotate pi radians in a clockwise direction since it is negative. That brings us to a point in the fourth quadrant with coordinates 12 over 13 and negative 5 over 13. So the coordinates at negative t minus pi is equal to 12 over 13 and negative 5 over 13. Let us have the third exercise. For this, we need to use our calculator to find cosine of 3.45. Again, be reminded that cosine of 3.45 means cosine of an angle measuring 3.45 radians. Since the default unit in your calculator is most probably degrees, we need to change it to radians. To do it in your classes calculators, please follow the following steps. After turning on your calculator, please press shift, then setup, then press 2 for angle unit then please press another 2 for radian. This is shown to you in the short clip that follows. Now that you're good for that, we can have cosine 3.45 like how you do normal calculations. This gives us the answer, negative 0.95. Of course, remember to change your calculator mode to degrees again when doing the other calculations. Let's have another one. Let's find cosecant of 7.18. Since our calculator is in the radian mode, we are good to proceed. Cosecant is the reciprocal of sine, so we press 1 over sine of 7.18.
Please do not use sine inverse as it is not equal to cosecant of 7.18. We will learn more of that when we discuss inverse trigonometric functions, but for now, let's be clear that for your cosecant, you will have to find 1 over sine. For secant, you will use 1 over cosine, and for cotangent, you will use 1 over tangent, not the inverse functions. Let us have the last exercise. Here, we have to find the five trigonometric function values of t, given that sine of t is equal to 3 over 8, and t is in the second quadrant. Since we know that sine of t is equal to 3 over 8 and t is in the second quadrant, and we also know that sine of t is equal to the y-coordinate, we now have to find the x-coordinate. Since your t is in the second quadrant, and we know that it's in the unit circle, then it should satisfy x squared plus y squared is equal to 1. Therefore, we plug 3 over 8 into y, and we get x squared plus 3 over 8 quantity squared, and that will be equal to 1. Solving for x squared, we get 55 over 64 from 1 minus 3 over 8 quantity squared. Solving for x, we get positive or negative square root of 55 over 8. But since t is in the second quadrant, we know that we will only take the negative value for x, which is negative square root of 55 over 8. Now that we found x, which is negative square root of 55 over 8, and we were given that y is equal to 3 over 8, we are ready to solve for all the trigonometric function values. Since, again, sine of t is equal to y, then that will simply 3 over 8. Cosine of t is equal to x, so that will be negative square root of 55 over 8. Tangent of t is equal to y over x, so that will be 3 over 8 over negative square root of 55 over 8, or negative 3 over the square root of 55, and we have to rationalize that, so that's going to be negative 3 square root of 55 all over 55. For the reciprocal functions, we have cosecant of t is equal to 8 over 3, the reciprocal of sine t, and then we have secant t, the reciprocal of cosine t, and that will be negative 8 over the square root of 55, but of course we rationalize that so we get negative 8 square root of 55 over 55. Lastly, we have cotangent t, which is x over y, so that will be negative square root of 55 over 8 all over 3 over 8, or that is simply negative square root of 55 over 3. So now we've mastered finding trigonometric function values. We again thank our references, the developers of the GeoGebra app, as well as Miss Mary Gay Antoinette Magpantay of PSH's main campus, the writer of SLG 11.4.2.